Alrighty then. So. So it's the summer of 1894. But you were hoping for the fall, but too bad. Uh, you have just arrived um, by train. Uh, first, you you took a, a, a boat across the Atlantic to make your way to the New World, right? You know, to to um, to, to uh, North America proper, and then took a train to Mexico City. Uh, Department P of the Ministry of Unusual Affairs, uh, specifically your department head, Baron Christopher Hilton, um, asked you to um, investigate a spate of disappearances that had occurred in Mexico City uh, that was first um, telegraphed to them uh, by a um, agent that they had essentially embedded in Mexico City. Um, Marco Alarcón. Marco Alarcón um, will be your contact there in Mexico City. Uh, you are supposed to. You're supposed to meet him inside the city proper. Um, and uh, once making contact with uh, Marco, um, he will sort of explain some more details about the situation and what to do with not only the investigation, but how to sort of... Um, how to take that investigation and uh, execute it subtly, quietly, without uh, running awry of the Federales. Mm -hmm. So, we've got our contact, Marco. His last name is A L O C O N. A L A R C O with the accent going mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you're okay. supposed to meet him at the, the Grand Hotel Ciudad de Mexico. So you hear the um, the whine uh, and the blast of steam of a train coming to stop in the station uh, on the outskirts of Mexico City. Um, uh, you see that even here, um, at sort of the side streets at the edge of the city, there's uh, quite a few um, carriages going by, uh, people uh, uh, in um, sort of traditionally... Um, uh, Mexican clothing, ponchos, and sort of heavy hats and so on, uh, making their way through either on carriages or um, leading uh, their uh, burros or horses down down the path. You see a couple of uh, merchants, um, really just street vendors, frankly, um, along the sides of the, the adjoining streets, uh, selling various sort of uh, seasonal fruits, um, and um, uh, street meat and that sort of thing that they have uh, cooked and, and you, there's this sort of there's this intoxicating smell of street food and the burning of coal from the trains behind you and, and the smell of it smells like modernization meets mm -hmm. um, meets the spice of life here you are because um, this Modernization has happened in Mexico City like pretty rapidly over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, ever since uh, President Por uh, Porfirio Diaz um, took over and, and, um, and uh, sort of instituted these changes. So you have a rough idea. You were given a description of what Marco looked like. 
Um, and you were told that he would be meeting you at the Gran Autosierra de Mexico um, that you have a general sort of address for and you can then make your way through the city and meet him and get a better idea of what's going on. Um, the Baron, uh, Baron Hilton, told you that these disappearances were... His words were suspicious and violent. Hmm. There was a suggestion, based on the, inf- the little information that he gave you, he explained that Marco had given him essentially a, um, a almost like an abstract of what had happened in the city, what was happening in the city, and that Marco would have some more detailed information, but that essentially people were disappearing in ways, uh, in circumstances that were suspicious, and also that would sometimes leave um, small trails of blood or uh, uh, particular instances of um, uh, damaged furniture, what looked like a struggle, but there was never enough evidence in place uh, for the Federales to make any kind of inroads in, in those cases. And um, Marco had seemed to suspect that something unusual was happening, which is why he sent the telegram yes. and then Baron Hilton decided to send you. Okay. So as we are uh, getting off the train and heading off of the platform, uh, let's get an idea of what our people look like. Let's go right to left this time. Stephen, what is what does Elwood look like? Uh, probably like 5'9", has brown hair, uh, lighter skin, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think what he would wear. I'm not going to lean into the standard like kilt and whatnot. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, he'd probably wear... My assumption, based on sort of Victorian standards, is he'd probably be wearing like a like a like, like a suit, basically, like a mm-hmm. waistcoat and shirt, sure. jacket, pants, that sort of yeah. thing. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, it has a pistol kind of holstered underneath, mm-hmm. and then a sawed-off shotgun on the hip. <laughs> Just wearing that out and about, are you? Yep. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I assume our followers are not with us, or are they? Mine is. <laughs> no, your followers are. Your followers are with you. They they travel cool. with you on the train. All yeah. right, great. I mean, for the most part, the assumption is that they are in sort of the background, unless you need them. Mm. Okay. They're not really full fledged NPCs in and of themselves. Okay. Unless they become those things, you know what I mean? Like through the course of play, you, you level become, them up. If you become attached to them, like you can technically level them up, but like. You know, they can play important parts, but otherwise they're just there to sort of supplement your skill set. Right. And provide links to your past or your current occupation or what have you. Right. So they are there. They're, you know, getting your luggage out from the from the train. And they're just sitting around taking a look at, sort of taking in the ambiance and sort of wondering what they've gotten themselves into. Cool. So should we describe what our followers are when we describe ourselves? No. Okay. Unless they become relevant. Cool. Got it. I would say the first time you use them, if you use them, it would be a good time to pull them up. Okay. So, um, Robert, what does Gabrielle look like? All right, she's uh, very tall, kind of muscular, over six feet. Um, dark hair, dark eyes, dark skin. Um, she's wearing, like, boots and leather pants. Now, since your size is one, you're like, yeah. technically you should be, like, seven feet tall. I thought it said over six feet. I don't know. So seven feet is fine. I mean, well, if, you, if you want to be a proper giant, I, I would think even, even for a woman, like a six five would probably. Oh be sure, yeah, that giant. makes sense. Yeah. So she's really fucking tall. Yeah. Okay, that's what we really need to know. And she's kind of muscular, dark hair, dark eyes. Mm-hmm. She's wearing like leather pants and leather boots. Uh, Hopefully, a shirt. Yeah, <laughs> she's got like a Bar open one of those shirts that. Go like up to here and have the arms off the shoulders. She's also wearing a leather bar- bodice, which I'm going to say is her leather armor. Sure, yeah. And she has a venomous snake around her neck. Of course, as you do. In case. Men oh, and a scimitar and a dagger in her belt. 
I'm wear, I'm wearing like not necessarily nondescript clothes, but I don't have like the outfit of a clergyman on. Oh sure, yeah, you're not in your your your. Mm. But maybe yeah. some like the full get up. So some like very like modest brown clothes, sure kind of thing. But my my assistant is very much a clergyman, full outfit. <laughs> well, I also forgot she only has one eye. Ah, oh, there you go. Important to know. Eye patch, glass eye, just leaves it open for infection. Eye patch. Okay. Okay. So you are dressed in a kind of a nondescript way. You're not obviously a clergyman, no. but your follower is, is clearly. It's, a, it, it's more of like a page, and so it's got like the, you know, the the the, the, the not the hat, but like the the haircut where it's oh. where the without, top is the, blank. Without blo- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. tonsure. Um, okay. Um, Tick, what do, you, what do you look like? We are wearing a... There's more than one of you? No, just so far. Very Royal central. Lee. Um, wearing a just maroon robe. No hood, just up to the neck. Sure. It comes yeah. down to the wrists mm-hmm. and all the way up to the top of the neck. Just loose maroon robe. Mm. Okay. Yes. Comfy. Hair, no hair? Mm. I think we have short hair. Okay. Do have it like a staff. Yep, we are uh, very short hair, virgin on shaved balding area. So yeah, not long hair at all. Tall, so you short. shaved balls. Yeah. You said, that's what I heard. Shaved, shaved ball. balls. Yeah, shaved balls. Okay. okay. Shaved hands. I don't need to know that. It's enough. Average height. Okay, five ten. That's not average. That's <laughs> not average. <laughs> He's average. The Vietnamese. That's not average. Mm-hmm. For men, five ten is actually average. Not for the Vietnamese. Oh, no, the, the, average height five six. six. With that. Okay, that's about as tall as I am. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That's true. Okay, uh, it's also modern. Dear average height. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know what Gabrielle looks like? Yes. Just go the opposite direction, like complete <laughs> fucking opposite. She's like <laughs> wearing a, five... cl- a clown costume. <laughs> no blonde hair. So she's like strawberry blonde with green eyes. She's fucking Irish, so she can't mm. tan for the goddamn life of her. Uh, she's got the leather armors on, but she has like. So do you have three eyes? <laughs> Don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. I was thinking zero, actually. <laughs> um, but she's got, like, a, a skirt on over box, it so, yeah. that's got, like, a slit in it so she can still kick people. But she's tried to add color to her outfit. Mm. Probably somewhat um, interestingly. Poorly. She also has, yeah, she also has like, more? a big hat on because she can't tan and she knows it's nice sure, and city. Sure, it's going to burn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. She probably stands out quite a bit in Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, you're looking around. Not a lot of white people, strangely enough. Especially not a lot of fucking like Irish strawberry blonde people. No. With a very large Irish man behind her holding her bags. You know, it's cool. What year was this again? 1894. Okay. Uh... To give you some idea. I okay. wanted to check when the potato famine was. <laughs> 1845. So tons yes. in America, yeah. not many in Mexico. So to give you an idea of what's ha- what's happening, uh, so so here's what happened in 1893 in the world of this sort of universe, right? Mm-hmm. Henry Ford, his first automobile, right? Nice. Uh, women in New Zealand were granted the right to vote. <laughs> Columbia grants women the vote later the same year. Cool. Uh, Edison finishes constructing the first motion picture studio. The Ivory Coast becomes part of French West Africa. Ooh. World's Fair opens in Chicago. Oh, yes. Cool. That's right. Okay. That, was a that, that, that puts a lot of things in perspective. Yeah. In Hawaii, Queen Lilikwakalani's like, government is ousted by U.S. Marines. Yeah. <laughs> the Wait. tomato is declared to be a vegetable by the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> well, they're wrong. <laughs> The Gold discovered in Western yeah, we Australia. Yeah, oh, oh yes, yep. Cultured oh, pearls are grown for the first time. Oh. Louis Bouton invents the first underwater camera. Cool. Nice. Charles and Frank Duryea drive the first gasoline-powered automobile on America's public roads. Hmm. Carl Anton Larsen becomes the first man to ski in Antarctica. Hmm. Wow. The plutonium which is a, excuse me for a moment, a ship uh, uh, 
piloted by an expedition from the Ghost Club to Mexico, uh, returned uh, to Cornwall amid great secrecy. Right. France conquers Laos. Mm -hmm. There's a global stock market crash. Fritjof Larsen fails to reach the North Pole but proves the existence of drifting sea ice. Cool. And a revolt against the rule of the British South Africa Company is crushed in Matabelelat. Mm -hmm. Here's some stuff that happened in 1894 to give you some idea of like what's, 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 what's happening now, what's going to happen in this year. Coca-Cola sold in bottles for the first time. Real cocaine? Mm -hmm. Yes. Probably also very yeah. small. That's it's about, not very French small. anarchists begin a reign of terror in France and London. The First Sino-Japanese War. Mm -hmm. Bubonic Plague strikes Hong Kong. Ooh. The Pullman Labor Strike in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Large meteor shower witnessed over southern France. Dahomey completely incorporated into French West Africa. The International Olympic Committee meets for the first time. Mm. London's Tower Bridge opens for traffic. Mm. The President of France, Sadi Carnot, is assassinated by an anarchist. Oh, yeah. Serious fire at the Chicago World's Fair destroys most of the buildings. Yeah. I remember that. The Owl Club opens in South Africa. Done. There's the Dreyfus Affair. <laughs> Following a failed Martian invasion, Percival Lowell begins studying the planet on the pretense of mapping the canals. Mm. The Donghak Peasant Revolution sweeps through Korea. China and Japan send forces to quell the unrest but end up fighting each other. <laughs> Uganda becomes a British protectorate. Death duties yeah. are introduced in England, and Marconi demonstrates wireless telegraphy. It bore the, the burgeoning origins of the radio. Ooh. All right. So it's a good couple of years. Yeah. That's 1893, 1894. And again, this is the summer of 1894, so some of that stuff hasn't happened yet, but that's the pulse of, you know, of life right now. But were I a betting man, I would take advantage of knowing what's going to happen later this year. Mm -hmm. Protectorate. That's an awful generous mm. word. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Remember, history is written by the victors, not the truth. Yep. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there you are, just outside the station, at the edge of Mexico City. Mexico City. Good old Mexico. What to, uh, what to do first? Do we have any idea directionally where we need to be going, or is that something we need to be acquiring about? You have an address, but in terms of, like, navigating the streets to get there, I mean, you've never been to Mexico City before, um, and um, uh, Marco, uh, in his communication with Baron Hilton, has given you some, like, rudimentary directions. Like, it's, you know, it's basically in the northwest corner of the city, Gonna have to go down at least this thoroughfare for you know a couple of miles and I'm gonna ask a blah blah blah. But it's probably a good idea to ask a local like how to get there. I mean, I've survival with that help navigating and hmm. tracking and stuff. Oh. If you'd spent since you're, you've literally just gotten here, okay, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd ask. Would streetwise help? But again, we yes, I believe yeah? so. Okay. Would, yeah. Yeah. Now we're we're to ask. Give you kind of an idea. Know who to ask, sort of. I'll ask yeah, the local. that's a great idea. I got linguistics in romantic languages. Romance languages. Yes. Yes. Romantic languages. <laughs> 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 very, very different. <laughs> so we can assume that because of your known romance languages, you know Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. You're the one person and who I speaks got Spanish. I asked. Before I was so take it you rolled your streetwise rating, which was what? Let's just five. Okay, you rolled your five dice. So maybe I'm translating. And I got three successes. Three successes. Okay, very good. So that difficulty was a two. Like two is the average difficulty, right? Okay. Okay. So we'll say that um, Gabriel, you spy a a sort of a young, wet behind the ears um, man uh, leading uh, what well, looks like a fairly sickly burrow. Um, the down west past the um, the train station, and you, as you see, um, Father Knox um, heading towards trying to get a sense of like who to ask. You sort of elbow him and point out this this gentleman there. Yes, Senor, can I help you? Oh, where is the hotel? Uh, was it El Mexico Grand Hotel Ciudad de Mexico? 
It's still in that operation. One? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't yeah, go with it's the still on to, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it was there in 1894. But we're mm-hmm. taking a little bit. Grand Hotel de Mexico? The Grand Hotel, yeah. It's, uh, we want to go down, uh, we'll take a left here. Uh, we'll have to walk for uh, 20 minutes or so. You take a left, you should be there. Uh, it's very hard to miss. Lots of lots of people, horses. As I so expect. On. Thank you. Lord bless you. See, uh, so the, you are, see you are a man of, uh, of the, the, the religious, yes? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, perhaps uh, you could uh, make a donation to the poor. Mm. He sort of gestures toward <laughs> to himself. <laughs> Alms to the poor, man. Okay. So then I'll look to my page. Who's <laughs> probably like carrying my stuff for me? <laughs> okay. What's your What's your page's name? Immediately throw page. him under a bus. <laughs> Let's go with page. Page the page. Page, page, page. the page. That's a little on the nose. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, uh, mm-hmm. What sort of nationality do you imagine them to be? Just English. So British, yeah. you'd say? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Get you a Victorian name generator real quick. Matthew. Oh, that's that's, that's, a, yeah. that's on the nose too. That is. I mean, for me, I thought this is my page. Kind of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin and, and Knox is also very very. Well, no, no. Dean. Dean. Dean sounds American to me. I know it. Kind of does, yeah. Willis. No, that's no, my last that's name. his last oh, name. That's your last name. <laughs> that's yeah. my last, last name. name. <laughs> Let's try um, uh, Harris. Harris. Harris is or Henry. Right. Sherman. Henry's a good. Henry. Choice. Yeah. If you want to go to Henry, yeah. Henry. Only if he's the eighth. Though. No. Okay, so we've got <laughs> Henry the Page. Henry, uh, where's my wallet? Oh, sir. Yes, it's um, it's buried under uh, your. Uh, uh, your uh, robes and so on. Just let, let me get this open. He moves the, uh, the suitcase open and tries to. He's, he, you see that he's like struggling with the latch. He's, Sorry, sir. Just 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 one moment, please. And then finally, there's a quick wrench, and the thing just essentially explodes open. You see a couple of articles of clothing go flying. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, sir. It's okay. Let me just. It's uh, okay. Yeah. And he reaches in and grabs a little like a leather pouch. Here you are, sir. Um, you best... Well... I'll help clean up. Oh, all right. There you go. I'll... 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 I'll, uh, I'll get this started then, shall I? Uh, then I'll, uh... Hand him, uh... Some alms. God bless you, sir. You actually see him in front of you. Bite the coin. And then gesture at you. <laughs> put it in his pocket and then begin leading his sickly burrow. Uh, down the street. No, no hope. It should be this way. Uh, just about twenty minute little jaunt here. Take a turn. It's a pretty busy place. Need to bid. Okay, so we're uh, we're, we're following um, uh, Father Knox's directions. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep, taking a walk. <laughs> so you're walking through the streets of, of Mexico City. The Heat is is beating down on you, despite it being it's fairly early in the morning. It's about like ten o'clock or so, but you know, so it hasn't quite gotten full sun yet. But it's summer in Mexico City, mm. so and the sort of the trains, the electricity, the, the factory burning and stuff like that is not helping matters. You're getting the sort of the first taste of mm. of uh, the the. the the thorough punctuation of the ozone layer. Um, so it begins. You're walking through the streets. You're passing by. Uh, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty jarring picture, really, because you've got folks in um, sort of, you know, pinstripe suits and things walking down the street, with fine leather shoes, and you know they're they're smoking and. Then you've got, on the opposite side of the street, walking in sort of the same neighborhood, you've got, you know, folks in, like, some, not tattered clothes exactly, but worn work clothes and leathers and ponchos and all manner. It's, it's, it's very indicative of sort of the, this, this liminal state 
that Mexico City finds itself in. Between the traditional rancheros kind of era and this, this new, modern, industrialized place. Um, sure enough, it takes you about takes you about twenty minutes. You follow the directions as as the young uh, borough leader gave you, and you find that there is a, uh, a pretty sizable hotel. It looks like um, uh, three floors, uh, made out of a, a sort of a um, sort of a lighter colored uh, uh, wood uh, that is sandwiched in between a couple of other sort of older looking buildings. Um, sure enough, the, you, this, the signage points this out as, you know, despite not being able to read Spanish, you know Gran Hotel Ciudad de Mexico very clearly displayed. Um, and you can see a couple of people milling in and out. There's a, there's a carriage that's been parked in front, out of which it looks like a bellhop is beginning to sort of transfer a what looks like a white man's luggage into the lobby. Enter the lobby. Okay. Yeah. So there's a there's a kind of lazy heat in here still as they've generally left the doors open to try to kind of air out the place. Uh, there is a, uh, a sort of a fine walnut desk about like say waist high in the corner of the room. Opposite that you can see a row of what looks like Charitably, you'd call them mailboxes. Essentially, they're sort of like really just metal cubbies, Mm -hmm. essentially, that uh, are meant to sort of collect uh, mail and messages for the um, for the for the guests for the guests. Thank you. Yes. Uh, There is a uh, a man in uh, what looks like a um, a sort of a. uh, like a burgundy sort of um, uh, uh, uniform, essentially, you know, straight buttons and, and pants. He's wearing a sort of like a, not quite a pillbox hat, but essentially a, a small cap. Um, you see that he's sort of, uh, he is essentially looking around the lobby in a kind of an uh, absent board sort of fashion. There's a series of there's a couple of uh, tables and chairs about in the lobby for people to for people to sit in, and there is a large staircase that folds upward back up onto, the, onto what, look, what is clearly a second floor that's not visible from here. But would I need to roll a perception to see if the gentleman for whom we're looking is here? Even no, I notice him? No, you. I mean, they, you. You, got, mm-hmm. um, you know what? You can take the average on perception to do, like, mm. a general perception, but no, you know a general idea of what Marco looks like. Uh, With a perception of yeah, four, is he here? I see <laughs> okay, so you, are, you take, are you taking the average on a perception, then? You want to mm-hmm. do four? Okay. Four, and then we'll roll for the half. Yeah, five. Okay, five successes. Well, that's very hard, mm-hmm. right? So no. that matches that difficulty. You would get three successes, not five. If you're taking the average and rolling one dice. Well, yeah, but his average is four. Yeah, that's I got a nine I'm in saying. perception. Oh, it's four yeah. plus, so it's either four or five, depending on if you make that roll or not. Oh. Yeah. I am very perceptive because I'm a detective. So, so you scan the room. Um, there are there are three other people in here apart from the um, the, the the desk concierge. Clerk, essentially, yeah, you might you might call it concierge. Mm. Um, there is a sort of older, white-bearded man, uh, cigar uh, in the mouth, sort of reading what looks like uh, uh, the, the city's paper. Um, there is a younger couple, a, a man and a woman, um, dressed in what looks like um, what you would call Western attire, you know, mm-hmm. a shirt and a blouse, and then, you know, uh, pants that are fashionable for, like, you know your average the modern kind of pants. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, they are sort of traveling. they are sort of quietly necking in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, you don't see none of these people, or of course the concierge himself, mm-hmm. uh, match the description of Mark. I I'm gonna shoulder Kelvin because I know you're the only one who speaks Spanish here. They're <laughs> 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 gonna do a lot of talking. Here. <laughs> Maybe we ask him a bit, Mirko. Oh, which which one? The, 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 
wouldn't want to bother them. You just pointing <laughs> pointing at the man in the hat. <laughs> okay. I, do you want me to translate or? Okay. So can I help you? <laughs> he speaks in English. Oh. <laughs> Good. Uh, we're looking for a man. His name's Merkel. I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand your answer. <laughs> can you translate? <laughs> I can do that. Marco. My, my apologies, sir. Marco. Marco whom? Marco... Other phone. phone. There's a... He's a guest here? You're looking for? Oh, if he's not a guest, we've been asked to meet him here. I see. Well, I'll, I'll look at the, uh, the ledger. Thank you. Takes a look. wonder, he might have left some mail this day. I is uh, Marco Alarcon. He's yes. uh, three or four. Wonderful. Are we free to go up and see him? I see, see, see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you uh, he, he sort of flags you down as you sort of. Oh, are you uh, checking in? Uh, oh, we're just here to visit a friend. I we, see, see. Yeah. I, we may be. We may be. Uh, so, uh, honestly, we don't really know for certain yet. Well, we are. Uh, the, the check in. Uh, time, we close up at uh, 4 o'clock, so if you are wanting to get a room, you have to uh, come in and register before then. All right. Uh, would it be better if we left our, some of our friends down here, so you know we're not trying to just sneak into his, his hotel room and stay there for free? It kind of gives you sort of a blank look. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did Did you get the man right, any I have a question, because I didn't think this through very well. Um, my, uh... Native language is Romani. Sure. So, do I know enough English to get by? I would say, as a junior agent of the mm-hmm. ministry, you'd have to know, which right? is a British agent. Yeah, you've got enough English. You at least understand English. Maybe you can't speak it very well, but yeah, yeah. or read it. Yeah, you may you may not be able to read English, but like you can, you know, get talk, some conversation. Yeah, you can conversational. Talk to your superiors. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, Mac, do you mind staying down here for a bit? That's my follower's name, sorry. Oh, Mac. My large oh. Irish man. <laughs> you, there's a better name. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of it for like, okay, <laughs> Seamus. Seamus, Seamus, there's Seamus. there's a good name. <laughs> what, Mac what you, isn't actually his name, that's just what she calls him. What is, what, is, yeah. what is he to you? That he's your... He's just my friend. But what, 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 what function does he serve? He is literally just kind of my, my muscle. Yeah, okay, Seamus the muscle, that makes yeah. sense. Because Henry the page, right? I'm just trying to get an idea of what these people. I mean, he's are not word, stupid word. either, but he's just sure. Kind of, yeah. He's good at one He follows thing. me around in case someone tries to like do something untoward, and then he gets to punch them. Yes, miss. Yeah. What can I do for you? Do you mind just hanging out here for a little bit? We have to go up to three or four. That doesn't bother me. Thank you kindly. I'll just uh, take a seat over there, shall I? Yeah, and if, you know, there's a bar nearby, help yourself. <laughs> oh, I miss McLean. It's, we're in Mexico City. There's a bar every 30 feet. <laughs> well, just make sure you can still walk. That won't be a problem. You see him sort of gesture off and get in a chair and put his feet up on one of the tables. <laughs> You you clearly see the concierge give him a kind of like vaguely disquieted look <laughs> at that. And they clearly don't pay him enough to care that much. Mm. <laughs> Head up the stairs. Okay, let's go. So you make your way up the main staircase uh, onto the third floor. Um, and you head towards the direction of 304, which is on your right as you're coming up the stairs and going down the hallway. Uh, so, as you approach the door, you notice that it is slightly ajar. Oh, there's, just a, there's just a sliver of space in between the the door jam, essentially, and the door itself. That's Stand back. I'll go in first. Uh, can I get an intuition All right. on this? Yes. <laughs> I don't even wait for that. I'm just going to... <laughs> I get... I get. I mean, theoretically, a, intuition a, is like a vague, a, is, is vague, vague gut feeling. Yeah, 
Do you want to do an intuition? I'm doing intuition. Or, or, or just maybe an average. Uh, uh, it would be like a two success. What is intuition? Empathy. Empathy. It's under, so it's under empathy. Yeah, okay. so it would be yeah. a three. So you're taking the average on that. That's yeah. a three. Okay. okay, so this clearly... The minute you see that the door is slightly ajar, um, this uh, sets off sort of alarm bells because you're like, okay, e- uh, yes, it's Mexico City. Mm-hmm. Yes, they've modernized. But you leave your door locked. Mm-hmm. This is unusual. This, at the same time as you are going to sort of enter the door, both of you notice that, uh, yeah, the uh, where the doorknob is on that door, it looks a little dented, like somebody has, mm-hmm. like actively kick the door in. There's some light splintering of the wood. So are you going all the way in? No, I'm going all okay. the way in, yeah. So Gabrielle, you <laughs> open the door and you see inside a fairly modest hotel room. There is a bed, a desk, what looks like an old dresser, um, a, uh, a sort of a, an oval-shaped mirror that's been sort of propped up uh, on, the, on, on, on the dresser itself. The mirror you can see has been shattered. Hmm. There are uh, shards of glass both on the dresser itself and on the floor uh, you can see that the bed is unmade it's all slightly tussled um, not to the point of being intentionally messed with but as if somebody had gotten out, out of bed and not bothered to sit uh, not to, 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 to make it again and there is there is no one in the room no one in here, so I say we search the place. Come in. Um, Is there any, like, blood trails? The signs that we had heard from the telegraph in this room? Give me perception. Or invest- well, or investigation. Whichever. Investigation? Yeah. Investigation would be appropriate here. Investigation crimes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I got four successes in investigation. Work. Okay. The so average three plus and I rolled a six, so... Big roll. Four? Yeah, four. Well, since my investigation is a zero. Okay. <laughs> well, you That's walked fair. in and saw nobody in there. You were like, well, my job is done. <laughs> <laughs> I did the work, guys. <laughs> seven? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anybody else beat a seven? Pretty good here with a four. four. I mean, yeah, no, I thought I was doing all right. I mean, I did average with the four. With the four. I'm a detective. This is <laughs> literally what this I do. This is literally <laughs> what you do. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. I, I am hyper built for investigating crime scenes, and I rolled really well. So. Okay, so I'm technically hyper built for exercising. Everything else is about it. Just it's jazzercising, it's and yeah, aerobic yeah. stuff. So, Father Knox, Dick, and uh, Deirdre, uh, the three of you, as you're sort of like, it's a relatively small room. As you're sort of like, you know, fanning out a little bit and getting a good eye on things. Um, the three of you uh, notice that um, some of the um, uh, accoutrements uh, in, in the room, some of the stuff on the dresser and everything, like that, clearly personal effects. You've got a um, sort of a cigarillo case here, a, um, some, some loose ties there. Uh, you've got a, what looks like a torn um, pillowcase and everything. All of this stuff is sort of scattered haphazardly throughout the room. Um, some of which, you, as you can see, is you're sort of lifting the sheets up under the bed and everything. You can tell that this was... Well, the indication seems to be some kind of struggle. Struggle. Either that or... Um, struggle rather than, like, someone searching. Either that something. or Marco trashed the room. So it looks like it was a struggle. Always trash the room. Now, with your seven, mm. <laughs> um, you spy... Um, uh, close to, just below the window in the room that is sort of on the far wall as you're walking in, um, you see the telltale signs of, admittedly very small, but you spot it, a sort of a crusted patch of blood. Mm. We're talking about maybe two inches. Mm. What are we here? I, it looks like he didn't want to leave, but he had to. Mm. Do you find any blood? I, wee bit. I'll kind of go to the window and like open it. Is there anything out? Like so you raise that up, take a look. Um, sheer no, drop. It's or? it's essentially a sheer drop. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone came in or out through here. Mm. Does okay. this mean that someone took our contact? 
Hi. Perhaps they flew. Hmm. But the window was closed. Hi. They have enough mind to close the window back again after they flew the out. Mo- the Mothman's never been seen in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Questions don't, don't want to draft. Actually ask yeah, it's so. <laughs> The question is now: Do we yeah, report they, it to the authorities? Or did they just maybe hit their head on nearby this the blows near the window, or just uh, could have been knocked out and then taken out through another exit? I uh, I think if he was taken out through any exit, it would have been the door. Are there closets or anything that we haven't looked in? Well, it just meant out out the building. No damage to the wall, so hmm. We want to split up, um, examine the hallway, and see if we can find any alternate exits. Any signs of blood in the hallway? <clears throat> I can go down and talk to the man at the counter. Well, it's a good, good idea before he gets any questions. This is the third floor. They might not have heard anything, but I'll you know. go with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, is this something we should be alerting to the authorities? No. No. Well, I'd like to not get blamed for this. I'd like to not get caught with this. Remember, we were supposed to meet him in order to not meet the Federalists. Hi. So I'm just supposed to go down there and say that he's disappeared? And that we need his contact information for what? You might be better off asking if they saw him go anywhere. Disappeared has implications. Especially here. Alright, I I can handle this. Oh, okay. Can you? (laughs) Yeah. Aye, we'll be fine. I'll head downstairs. Give us a shout if we should run. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Okay, so what's happening? I'm going downstairs to I'm the going with of the her, desk. And I'll do the talking. Just trust me on this. I so don't... You're, you're going to talk to the concierge. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the man at the desk is prepared for as much woman as you are. <laughs> if you are. <laughs> with a viper. All right, but if you make him pass out, he can't answer our questions. <laughs> okay, so you mm-hmm. make your way back downstairs, <laughs> and the um, situation is just as you left it. You've got um, Seamus still with his feet up. It looks like he's lightly dozing at this point. Um, I'll so go I'll over and, and briefly tell him what's going on upstairs real quick before That's I go to the desk. What would you say, Matt? Hey. Uh, the man I'm supposed to meet with is disappeared. Okay, and this is where I pipe in. Uh, fuck. To whom? Well, I'm talking to Seamus, not the guy at the counter. Okay, so I'm talking to the guy at the counter. Okay, so you... Uh, can I help you, miss? Yes, it seems our associate has disappeared. Have you heard anything? I want to make this intimidating. Okay. Do I get an extra dice because I got a venomous-ass snake around my neck? Hmm. Are you threatening him with the snake? <laughs> it's looking at him menacingly. Okay. Then I would say you get two dice on top of that. All right. Because most of the time, in terms of modifiers, we're doing by twos, right? Two so that makes sense. sense. That's what my companion does. Just intimidation. What's the name of your snake, by the way? Charmer. Charmer. The Viper. Are they green, yellow? Fusion? Albino? Mm. Albino. (laughs) It's a snake. Mm. It's a thing snakes can be. The red eyes. Mm -hmm. Even more frightening. Okay, five successes. Holy wow, five successes. I won't send dice. Okay, so... It's a moment. Since you are intimidating, let's talk about intimidation. How it changes. <laughs> how it changes the conversation. The conversation. <laughs> how it changes. Yeah. And how the conversation has changed. I guess we're not staying here tonight. <laughs> Can I talk right? to the priest? The priest was nicer. Um, okay. So that's going to be. So, how many successes did you get? Uh, it was five. five. So we are comparing that, and I, I'm just, 
I'm going behind the, behind the scenes here to tell, help you. Versus his willpower. Understand the system, yeah. So his willpower rating would be what, what we're looking at here. Okay. Since he okay. is like an average ass person. Looking at like a two or a three? Two or one. I will tell you. Just a man. That's Run in a hotel. Yeah, that, that more than clears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got plenty of successes. So, you see him, like, visibly swallow. And, uh, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear nothing. Didn't hear nothing, didn't see nothing. No, 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 miss. No, no. Let's see. When there was clearly a ruckus going on, the room was trashed. Well, I, I don't, I wish, I'm not aware of this. Until you Were you out drinking? It's no, also on the third no, floor. No, There's no, a man. No, no, take, taking a nap then. Yes. You see, it's hot. Jesus. I would yes. imagine by now I've come up. <laughs> uh, you'll have to forgive my friend, sir. She takes things, things a little bit personally. Um, we, I understand it was on the third floor, so it might have been hard to hear. Uh, what time did you come on shift? It was, uh, you mean today? Yes. Uh, six o'clock. And you haven't heard any noises? Or saw a man that matches the description, and I'll give a description mark. I don't know what it is. I see, I see that man. Yeah. When did I you see, see him? him? Check in. When did he check in? But he doesn't. So, uh, so two, three days ago. And you haven't seen him since. No. Hmm. That, that's not. That's not unusual. Sometimes our shifts, you know, we don't see some people. Is there another way sure. out of here? On the third floor, is there an additional exit? Maybe oh. a fire exit or a... Is there a way down? somebody could get somebody out by not going past you? I don't think so. Unless they got out of the window. But that's the, that's the movie dangerous. Hey, from the third floor. See? Mm. Do you have any contact information for him? I, uh... <clears throat> take a look at his ledger. Kind of pump, uh, pause around at the desk a little bit. Um, no. Yes. You gave me his name and paid in cash, pesos, and uh, that's, that's it. Did anyone ever come to visit him? That was it us. No. Not that I see. Alright. Who, um, sorry, I have so many questions. Can you have your, your friend move away, please? Uh, <laughs> I inch closer. <laughs> I, uh, Gabriella, uh, Gabrielle, I, I think I've got this. You go take a, <laughs> go take a seat with Seamus. I think you took along very well. <clears throat> and I'll just kind of put hands out and have you back up and like, <laughs> okay, I'll go across the room then look at him. <laughs> sure, yeah, keep that pressure. Up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about my friend. Um, That's okay. Give your snake a kiss, like very protective. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't know anything, I don't know what to tell you. Is there someone who's regularly here during the evening hours who might have also seen something? There is, um, I don't work evening hours, I do day shift. Uh, there's a man, uh, Joaquin, uh, he does uh, night shift. Alright. Uh, he's supposed to come in... Uh, Five o'clock today. How about this then? Um, I I'd like to check in and have a room, and then I can come down and talk to Joaquin si, after si. five o'clock. Okay. So uh, the, uh, <coughs> he's still like nervously looking. <laughs> I uh, you are the only one. Uh, um... Oh, I know. Um, my friend Seamus will be joining me. Uh, Shay. How are you? <laughs> okay, so could I get your 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 name, Miss? Absolutely, it's it, it's Deidre, Deidre McLean, and I'll spell that for him. Okay, yes. How long do you uh, intend to stay? Oh, um, let's just start with one night then. See. Si. And if I need to um, extend it, I can come back down and do that. Yeah. Yes, yes, you can do this. Yeah. He uh, gives you a price in pesos. 
I assume the agency. The agency gave me enough money to cover, so a couple of nights in a hotel, yeah. So I will pay for it. Uh, Do you have. uh, During the the summer, we don't have a lot of. um, have a lot of guests, per se. Uh, But. which you have a preference for which floor? Uh, I think I'd like to stay on the third floor, if that's all right. Hey, okay. Given that's what happened to our friend. Let's see, three or seven. Here you are. Sounds wonderful, thank you. Uh, and if my friends wish to get a room... Mm. <laughs> my friends <laughs> on the third floor wish to get a room, I'll send them down to you. I assume there's only uh, two to a room, yeah? See. Si. Thank you very much. Any more will be, uh, you can do, but it's very uncomfortable. Thank you, Kevin. So, so as soon as he looks back at me, I go like this, <laughs> and then I use, then I go like this with a snake. <laughs> you look snake's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> just two hands. So much intimidation. I, I appreciate your patience, <laughs> sir. Hey. I don't have think have she... Have I, I don't think she really hurt. Have me. a nice day, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no pets allowed. <laughs> I'm he wouldn't say that. <laughs> Shay, come on. You can come take a nap in the room. Cost extra. Why is it on the floor, though? Cost you the path. No, no, not. It's not my fault. They only ever give us one bed. If that's your fault, uh, you don't purchase. Uh, a fucking bed. For <laughs> <laughs> Am I supposed to just carry a bed around for you? How much is a cot? I, How much could it cost? Do you want to look at that? Fifteen dollars. <laughs> Do you want the bed this time? Yeah, more. No. You can have the bed, Miss. Doesn't matter. All right, I don't want your back to start hurting me enough. Yeah, well, <laughs> you shouldn't drag me around on these things. Yeah, but the problem is, you're already so tall. You wouldn't fit on it anyway. They'll be good for people up to six feet tall. So really, if they, you're behaving they on the end anyway. They cots for people my size. <laughs> All right, it's not like want... they've never seen me before. <laughs> people like me. <laughs> I'm not a circus freak. <laughs> <laughs> they never said you were. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll tell you what. While we're walking around, if you see a, yeah, a While cot, we're walking around, I'm carrying your, carrying your luggage, Liz. I told you I would carry some of it, but you told me no. Can we just get up to the room, please? Uh, absolutely, you lead the way. Tell you what, we'll switch off. Tomorrow night you can have the bed. Oh, I have to eat. That's an empty... It's a very empty gesture. I already asked you if you wanted it tonight and you said no. I'll sleep on the goddamn floor. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more about it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in the hotel just imagines you're married. <laughs> you see him sort of make a, a very very clear eye contact with the concierge. I'm sorry for the language. <laughs> She's very difficult. I'm not difficult. <laughs> hey, whatever. You see this, the concierge is like... <laughs> it's fine. When you told me we got a follower, I was like, oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Do we just have followers just to make Jason have more accents? And I things? just immediately used it to my advantage. We're like, oh, this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> a large Irish man and I bickering the whole time. It'll be great. Beautiful. <laughs> so while they were downstairs, I probably would have started investigating in the other oh. direction of the hallway to see if I noticed okay. any Going down. blood or any okay. thing. Did, what'd, what'd you get? Well, I decided to drag along Mr. Professional Investigator as well. So that when I <laughs> okay. what I think is a really good number, he can just smash it. Sure. <laughs> hey, could you not chew on that on Zach stuff, man? Oh, that's not good. You're gonna get his backpack on board. So that's a one success. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's why I dragged the uh, professional investigator, investigator along. Because, you know, one for six, just... You want me to maybe give it a go? There you go, Lot. Throw crimes on there. I don't think crimes would apply here. Okay. Unless you're specifically looking for one. criminal evidence. In that case, that, I mean, that would make sense. But if you're just given a general investigation of the whole way... Yeah. Yeah. Four. Four. Okay. So the two of you comb sort of the, the opposite end of the hallway. Um, it seems to have been kept pretty tidily. 
Um, this being sort of one of the bigger uh, hotels in, 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 in Mexico City, they have a certain reputation to uphold, and so they have staff to come through here. Looks like the place is clean, the, the, the wood's been buffed and everything like that. There's not a lot of, you know, um, brick or bracks and swept and everything. Do the classic, like, finger across the wall or on a little, like, ledge or something. No dust. Good maid service. Any scuffs or anything that... Noticed? Um, you do notice, uh, Elwood, a couple of scuffs here and there, but mm-hmm. they look like just particularly hard to wax out um, mm. traffic patterns, essentially. And it seems yeah. like they've tried? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what if they're still in the building? It doesn't look like somebody was dragged through the hallway? No. Okay. Hmm? What if they just carry him into the room? I could be. Because even in Mexico City, you're not going to want to carry a body downstairs. <laughs> just make him look like a drunk. You know, just, I mean, I don't know why you'd be saying, oh, I'm just going to take him back to his room in the hotel. Maybe by night. Maybe. Let's see if... You got any information downstairs? Imagine you guys I... are coming down as I'm coming up, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yep. The classic bump into each other mid argument. <laughs> yeah, right. We're still bickering about him sleeping on the floor. <laughs> Did you find anything? Anything? Nah. Not a wee bit. Uh, well, Shay and I have a room in 307. If you lot want to spend the night as well. You hear some heavy footfalls coming up the stairs now. I assume you all were, if you weren't, you mm. guys went back upstairs. If you weren't, yeah. Yeah. if you weren't still up there to begin with. Yeah, you hear some heavy hoof footfalls coming upstairs. And some, what sounds like, um, it's clearly Spanish being spoken by men. And it's clearly a, there's, 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 there's no attempt being made to hide the conversation. It's just sort of normal. What are they saying? Like, like, like Spanish? In Spanish, yes. Okay. Um... You can hear... Uh, actually, give me a perception. Would something like motive from empathy help? Or that would be a separate check. Right now we're just check. determining whether you can, like, I can make it out. Yeah. Okay, that's... One, two, three... Three? Okay. So, because of the the acoustics in this place aren't great, it's coming up from a bottom floor. We've got a lot of wood in the, in the place, so it's not exactly um, an audiophile's dream there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're getting snatches of the conversation. It sounds like, from what snatches you can get out, they are orders. It sounds like he is asking multiple people. It seems like he's got... This, this speaker, this main speaker, has got a couple of people with him, asking them to to make uh, a thorough sweep of the floors. Federalis. We should get in the oh, uh, hotel room then, and I'll quickly unlock the door and, like, I Everybody guess we'll all jump inside! <laughs> Seamus will be thrilled! <laughs> They're sweeping the whole floor. Well, I suppose you all better get out. <laughs> <laughs> I downstairs then. And start walking downstairs, just play cool. Okay. So, so who's doing what? I'm sorry. Uh, Seamus and I are going to go in our hotel room. Three oh seven. Got it. And I would just continue to calmly walk around the hallway, as if I just was someone's. He's staying here that was walking around, pacing. Yeah. Okay. You were heading downstairs. Mm-hmm. What about you, Gabrielle? I'm looking at the concierge meeting. So like... Oh, you're still downstairs? Oh, you're still downstairs? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I need this to know that, then, because you saw... Um, didn't come up. You saw what looks like... Yeah, I didn't follow her up. Okay, well then, in that case, you clearly saw um, uh, what looks like six men come inside, uh, dressed in the uniform of the Mexican army... Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, the, the Federales okay. of this period. You've got sort of these beige uniforms, these high boots, and everything, and these these caps. 
uh, led being led by one person uh, who is about six feet tall. He's got sort of like a, a thin, pointed mustache. Um, it looks like he is based on the um, the uniform that he's wearing and sort of the regalia, so to speak. He is some kind of officer. <clears throat> I'm gonna whip out my Bible. And start reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So glad. Okay. So glad that it was the Bible. Um, you know, just, you, know you see. So as these know. folks came in, the the head, the the officer, uh, went to speak to the concierge. Had a brief sort of conversation, um, in a low tone, you know, um, and then um, there's some nodding going on between the two of them, and then they began to go upstairs. So that's what you saw. So, uh, coming up the stairs, uh, you see, um, you're going downstairs, uh, so you make it to the second floor, and you see coming up from the first floor, um, the, uh, group of six individuals with this mustachioed officer, um, he, uh, does some quick gestures, and two of the soldiers peel out and begin sort of walking the first floor, you see they begin to sort of knock on doors, and and are beginning to, it looks like, question some of the folks inside. Um, so far, uh, they've made sort of a cursory notice of you, but they haven't stopped you or anything like that. Okay. Um, you see that the rest of the party continues to go up to the second floor. Remember, this is ground first, mm-hmm. second, third. Okay. So, um, just going to go on, on upstairs. Um, you see eventually the officer and two of his... Um, let me find. One, one additional. So the officer and one additional soldier are making their way through the third floor. Um, he takes a look at you know, sort of looks down, right, left, seems to see you, pick, and says, uh, "Senor, excuse me, senor." <laughs> I would turn around and look at him. Just to recognize that I heard him, but I would not have any idea what he was saying. Okay. No he, he, he comes to he comes towards you and sort of takes his cap off and puts it under his his, uh, his arm. Do I have any Espanol? No. <laughs> you see him sort of look at his does some brief some muttering to his his fellow soldier there. No uh, English. English, a little. See, si. yeah. you are uh, you are you familiar with uh, the man uh, three or four? No, I'm not. No, from around here, I'm not familiar with anybody. I see that. You, uh, you guest hotel? Not yet. I'm here for a break. I haven't checked in yet. I wanted to know where I might be checking in before I gave someone money. See. Si. Well, uh, stay here, please. We'll make an investigation. On this floor? Yes, see. Si. Can I wander around the, this floor? Stay on the floor, please. Okay. Yes. So stay I just continue <laughs> walking around the same floor as if nothing had happened. And he said, stay on the floor, so. You see, he, he, see, he makes some gesture to his little officer who then goes next to the, the door across from you at the end mm-hmm. of the hallway and is knocking. You see, it's opened up by you know, a, a, a small pregnant woman. Uh, they began sort of having a conversation in Spanish. Um, the, uh, the officer just sort of gives you a kind of a curt nod and turns on his heel and walks back. Um, you see that, so who's still on the third floor? You, Father Knox, you're there. Um, where are you specifically? Are you close to the stairs? Are you close to the side of the hallway that um, Marco's uh, room was? Or are you over there with um, Dick? Mm. I don't think I'm by the room, but I think I'm like... I, I guess I'm probably heading towards the stairs. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like pacing a little bit. Okay. The, uh, the officer sort of walks past you to 304. He, um, he has what looks like a riding crop with him. He uses that to sort of nudge the door open, takes a look inside, and takes a look back into the hallway and sees you pacing. 
Sen jag. Nej, si. Jag, jag har väl espanol. Si. God. Uh, you are familiar with uh, the man in 304? Oh, no, no. No, you don't know him. Uh, you are guest here? No, I'm staying with the church. The church is guest here? I am... I, we are here on the... Not pilgrimage. You're missionary. Uh, you are staying with the church, okay. What, you... Catholic? No, no. England. I'll say... Uh, but it's still the church. Right. Part of the si, church. Si, si. You hear anything uh, on this floor? No. No violence? Uh, shouting people? Violence? Violence, yes. Si. Some. You see, you hear, you no. see any violence? No. No? You stay here on this floor, please. We make uh, certainly, certainly. Po- uh, policy in, in, in investigation. Yes. Okay. Uh, you um. When many did you last right? <laughs> From what I understand, there was uh, no body reported. But if we do, we might be good to have somebody nearby. Certainly, certainly. Uh, see, thank you. Gracias. And he makes his way inside the room, back into the room, and you can see, you can hear what sounds like some light footsteps. It's clear that he's sort of casing the place. Eventually, um, this goes on for about you know ten minutes or so. so they eventually get to room three hundred seven. They do. Get, <laughs> well, actually, the 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 you hear a, a rap on the door of three hundred seven. Open the door. You see a a sort of a what looks like kind of a kind of a pasty faced. Uh, Gentleman with a chin beard, um, clearly like a private, essentially, um, who uh, has got his you know gun holstered and everything like that, and uh, he he sort of looks at you and is sort of surprised to see you. Can I help you? Yes, uh, you you uh, English? I uh, we speak English, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I see him. <laughs> If I see him, show. Do you need? Do you need a translator? Uh, see, see. Uh, help him. <laughs> um, he uh, he speaks to you. He, uh, he um, well, you don't even know, but we'll we'll <laughs> so you, <laughs> with the medium of your translator. Okay. Um, uh, you know, man in three or four. No, I'm afraid I don't. How long you been guest here? Oh, we just checked in. Maybe Today? About, you know, we, about um, 20 minutes ago. See, si. You hear any uh, violence? Uh, sc- shouting, screaming? That no. sort of thing? I mean, other than my mate and I yelling at each other, no. Uh, you, yeah, uh, uh, Seamus gives him a kind of like a... <laughs> <laughs> I figured it was just the lovers. Just... I... Mm. Mm. <laughs> we are this federal is making an in investigation uh, on this floor. Uh, don't go anywhere. Sure, is there Maybe. anything we can do to help? Uh, stay where you are. May I come back to question you more later, perhaps. No problem. See. Si. And he sort of, you know, can looks back into the room and looks at the two of you. Know. Like we haven't even unpacked. Like suitcases, yeah. like open. Yeah, so you, well, you would say he had a suspicious eye, but not a not a critical eye. I mean, just taking a look at like. Oh, I mean, you don't see many two t- weird white people. Two weird white people in the hotel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I get it. It's not unusual, but still. Yeah. I stick yeah. out. It's cool. I mean, if the, okay. it sounds like the hotel we would we'd stay in. You know. If... Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is one Probably of the main the hotels in the hotel. Hotel. Yeah. hotel. Mexico City. So if you're a foreigner, you'd probably stay in this one or yep. one other one. You know, you've got basically a handful. Of, I mean, you might want to try to save some money and stay in a, like a hovel or something like that somewhere else, but or a hostel. But then you could die. Maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, well, it's always that <laughs> thing should happen. <laughs> I mean, oh, you could stay at a stay in a motel here in Indiana now, and, and bad things would happen to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <sighs> you don't need kidneys. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> they haven't quite gotten to organ trade yet, I don't think. That but, is also technically true. You only need kidney. Mm, you know, just, uh, one. Yeah, what is what, blood transfusions were, were frowned upon for a long time. Mm. I mean, in some religious circles, they still are. Yeah. Seamus and I will go back to arguing about whether or not we should pretend to be husband and wife. <laughs> for this investigation. So uh, another ten minutes go by. A lot of you, as you're making your way, you see or hear quite a lot of I kind of follow them going. around in case they need another translator. Okay. After that first translation. You find that uh, other than... Um, you find that everyone on this floor apparently speaks Spanish. You've gotten mm-hmm. mostly mostly uh, Mexican citizens up here staying. Um and they have sort of fluent Spanish conversations, uh, which you're able to get. You know, you're able to get most of. Um, he's essentially at the 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 officer on the uh, excuse me, the soldier on the third floor, is essentially asking the same questions. You know, how long have you been here? Have you heard any sort of strange noises? Do you know the gentleman three or four, et cetera, et cetera? Just doing some preliminary sort of questioning. Um, and uh, after that additional ten minutes, you see uh, the officer. Leave the um, leave three o four. Um, he uh, puts his cap back on and stows his riding crop, um, and then you, you see him. He just kind of whistles at his his uh, officer. Excuse me, his fellow soldier. Uh, they meet back up. They have sort of a, a muttered conversation, and then um, he uh, the the officer gets the attention of both. Uh, I think, and Father Knox, who are out of there in the hallway, right? No, he and he says, uh, "Senors," he, he doesn't sort of gesture for you to come over. He just gets your attention. Uh, do not uh, leave the city. You may be useful for investigation. We we'll ask you further questions. See, see. They're just nodding. He says, <laughs> he says, uh, he uh, gestures toward his uh, his soldier. And uh, begins making his way down the stairs. And so for our perception, only two soldiers came upstairs, right? The officer and one soldier came up to the third floor. Yeah, so there isn't anybody else on the floor like that's going to be hearing us talking. No. They're all they're all back inside their rooms. I mean, they had their conversations mm. with I closed mean, up their doors again. You, you could always just come knock on 307, too. You didn't too. call the police, did you? No. Mm. Um, Gabrielle, you see again... Actually, hmm? when it? I saw them go up, I went to find a cantina. <laughs> just time to get out of here. Just okay. left. <laughs> I guess we'll see you in six hours. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, that kind of makes sense. Cops are here. <laughs> then leave. <laughs> they, yeah. they go past you, you leave. Okay. <laughs> so then, you know, um, where did you end up, uh, uh, Elwood? I went down to check into a room, and then... So you went down to the lobby? Yeah. Okay. And then basically going to hang out in the lobby for a little bit until the federales leave. So you're sort of minding your own business. You see what looks like the officer and his five soldiers with him make their way down down the stairs. He exchange, the officer exchanges a quick word with the concierge and then leaves uh, sort of briskly. Okay. Time to go. Head upstairs. So you're going back to the third floor. Mm-hmm. Cool. Or presumably I've gotten a room. What are you doing at the cantina, by the way? Drinking. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. There is a, a kind of a... Not upscale exactly, but like... A... A respectable watering hole across the street. That you make your way to and begin sort of drinking some... Um, uh, tequila? I was going to say tequila, but there's a bit... Uh, so you have some sort of basis. Uh, right. there you go. Yeah. Um, so a lot of you are back on the third floor, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Elwood is joined. I imagine now we're all going to cram into my um, hotel room? Yeah, probably. A little private, in quotes, conversation. Okay, so a lot of you are going to really squeeze, <laughs> squeeze into 307. <laughs> also, just kind of standing awkwardly. Uh, Did you bring your followers? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, she's gone off to the room. Only my follower apparently is with us. 
which sure doesn't do anything for the lack of space in here because <laughs> I decided he's over like six feet fucking tall. Big man. <laughs> and like, you know, a footballer. Did somebody call the police? We fucking room you got here. <laughs> I just we didn't check in. I've like already the complained thing about to do. it. Don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed the polite thing to do after um, Gabrielle scared the. What is women. all that business about with the, uh, the soldiers? I, I don't know. It seemed that they they, they talked to you as well. Nah. Yeah. They, they investigated three or four. Looks like they're looking for Marco hmm. as well. Probably now he, he could have disappeared last few days. Except the difference is they knew that he was disappeared. Yeah. I don't know that we're going to get any more answers until the night shift comes in. The man of the counter didn't know anything. Know anything. We're in Mexico City. Time. I doubt the man of the counter in the night shift is going to know anything either. I was. Well, you didn't see the way Gabrielle scared the poor daylights out of the man no behind the counter. This is a good way to die. As far as I can tell, it's the only lead we've got find out with uh, what uh, Joaquin knows after five o'clock. All right. All right, all right. And I, have, and I obviously heard he he was coming at five o'clock, so I would be back there by five o'clock. Okay, yeah. Too bad. So daylight savings that day. No. You're, uh, you're late now. They don't observe daylight <laughs> savings, do they? They're smart. So, um... I don't know about the rest of you, but I guess we're gonna spill the evening in here. Made by a. Uh, yeah. yeah. What'd you say? I don't know about the rest of you, but it looks like we're gonna be staying here for the evening. Aye, I think so. Preferably in your own rooms. Of course. Aye, there's not enough room in here for all of us. Especially once Shay gets set up on the floor. I'm gonna go outside of the hotel while we're waiting for a girl over to five and see if I can find any dumpsters. Outside the hotel? Dumpster diving in Mexico City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you make your way downstairs. You kind of look around. Uh, in the in the back alleys, you see that um, there are a couple of sort of discarded crates and barrels and that sort of thing, but nothing so much as a dumpster, exactly. Nor are you it being sure 1894, body. there's no, nah, there's... Yeah, there's only a handful of crates and barrels, and none of them look big enough to, to hide a body in full. Most of them are sort of either partially broken or um, um, they sort of molded over, essentially. Hey, Father, how about we go get some lunch? You can translate for us. Sure. Hi, Shay. I'll come get some food. I don't really have the stomach for it at the moment. Do we bring anything back? Uh, no, don't bother. I mean, if I'm going to be in this this tiny fucking room, I'd rather not have the shits at the same time. <laughs> I'd rather not be dead too. I've got the same teeth since I have to share the bathroom with you. There's a bathroom in there? Oh, wait, no, it's <laughs> just No, yeah. you, you're sharing it with the whole hotel. I mean, there is some central plumbing. There's, but... a, there's a bathroom, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's the hotel's yeah, bathroom. It's right. end of the hall. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get up in the middle of the night in the 90s and outhouses. Run to the toilet. No, I sleep in 1950s. <laughs> I try to forget that. <laughs> Just go get your get your burrito or whatever it is. You get out of here. I used to want me to leave so you can sleep in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can sleep now while, while you're out here. I guess so. Carrying on with you, isn't it? <laughs> Would I have seen any other back entrances to the hotel or anything while I was in the alleys? There, on the uh, south side, there was looks what looks like a service entrance, but for clearly for staff to enter in, uh, probably in sort of a, a, a downstairs kitchen or something like that. Kitchen or storage. Yeah, nothing like a like a proper sort of loading bay exactly, but you know there's a there's a back door. So that concierge lied to me. Because I specifically asked him if there was another way out of there. Not from the third floor directly, which That's is true. what you're asking. I asked him if there was some way somebody could get something past him without going past him. He's not going to say yes to that anyway. Mm. Well, you did intimidate him with a snake, so (laughs) there was... That doesn't guarantee the truth. (laughs) Sometimes that guarantees the answer you want to hear. Yeah. uh, Torture doesn't give you good answers. It gives you answers. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go get some tacos, Father. Let's go. Let's both have just tacos in Mexico. Well, maybe we can grab a pint. Oi, that does sound good. I'm bringing those back for Shay. Be like that. Oi, what was that about? You said about lovers there, eh? <laughs> If I didn't know you, that's what other people would think, I, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, we'll stop boring our, our DM now. I'm not. No. I was, that was Seamus. That was Seamus. Oh, that was Seamus. <laughs> <story>. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to get us out of the room immediately. <laughs> Head down to some put, food. You know, what, if I don't know you, and I hear people I, yelling about. That's just how we talk to each other. Apparently you've never been to Ireland. <laughs> oh no, no, no. M- many of the patrons, yep, yeah, are, are quite like that. So an you Irish Church of England, you probably haven't been to Ireland. An Irish person, a Scottish person, Scottish person, person, and an English person. Walk into a bar in Mexico. <laughs> they fall down. <laughs> it hurts. And they find a Romani with a snake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there aren't taco trucks in 1894. No. So, you, you, so, so street, a lot of you, if you're going out, you're heading across yeah. the street to the mm-hmm. the cantina. Yeah, we just want some food. Burn some time until. Are you all lunch. going? The three of us. It depends on whether or not the service door opens. Ah. Okay, so you try the service door. It's locked. Okay. <laughs> I'd go over and get something to drink because I haven't had a drink in a couple of minutes. You see the your Ooh, sort of fellows moving out. You have to make sure your stock is full whenever you mm-hmm. need it. So if you can, because that's yeah. your emergency yeah. ration yes. of alcohol. <laughs> that's if you find yourself. So you, you make your way inside the somewhat cramped cantina. Uh, lots of uh, wooden tables. The smell of cerveza uh, and sort of dried tequila. Uh, throughout the, the the restaurant, there's a kind of a, a dim, smoky atmosphere that somebody um, that a that, a, that a, um, a tourist might mistake for mood lighting, but it's just you know, lighting. Light. That's just uh, just yeah. the way it is. <laughs> yeah, that's just lighting. There's not any like electrical bur- b- bulbs in here or anything. Um, you see that there is a uh, uh, a balding uh, Spanish man uh, uh, waxing the bar. There is a um, a sort of a, a, a young woman in what looks like kind of peasant peasant like clothes. It's okay. um, and there are a couple of people just sort of nursing their cervezas, they're having conversation playing cards and that sort of thing. Um, the place looks kind of uh, su- not suppressed exactly, but there's a very there's a kind of a mellow vibe inside right now. I assume this is where I went, right? Yeah, that's where you went. Yeah, you're already. So a lot of you see Ga- 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 Gabrielle inside drinking a cerveza in sort of the back corner of the room. Mm-hmm. Guess we can go join her if the table's big enough. It's a. It, you, it could probably fit about yeah. four or five people in really comfortably, yeah. but. I would go up to the bar to order a drink. See Since I don't know Spanish, it. I would just open my canteen and have them <laughs> smell it and point to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Or if you, need, if you need some help, so he sort of leans over. <laughs> I close it. And I put it back in my room, and then I put money on the counter. He t- he, uh, he uh, brings down what's clearly uh, like a, a bottle of some kind of spirit, puts it on the table there, and then takes takes the money. And you can see him counting it behind the, the, the bar as you, as you pick it up. Take the bottle and go. <laughs> <laughs> now come over and sit with you guys. I think I'll take a translator with me for mine. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind. Well, if we're, getting it, here, Father. if we're getting everyone's orders. Hey, I just pointed to the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go up and order have help you help me re- order real food mm. and beer. That's perhaps not made from like, you know, rats and I'm pretty sure you got ripped off. <laughs> Money's not really a thing when you're a you monk, just want alcohol. So. Yeah. As you're discussing your drinks, a lot of you hear um, 
uh, a group of people come through the front door of the cantina, which is sort of a, in a kind of a traditional... Um, Shoulders back. It's not, it's not a, like a saloon-style door. It's more of like a... It's really sort of an open doorway along which has been sort of strung a sort of a, a multicolored sort of... Uh, curtain, so. like, a, like a curtain of sorts. Yeah, really just a piece of cloth, cloth essentially. Um, you see ducking in under it is a, um, a jarring sight. Uh, you see what looks like a, a six-foot-tall figure um, wearing... Um, the first thing you see is this skull-like face. It looks legitimately like a human skull. Inside, is there are these sort of like red um, spiral... Uh, they look like some kind of gem or like a polished lacquered wood or something like that inside the, the, the eyeballs. You can see that the skull mask has got these sort of these thick... Um, uh, uh, grinding looking teeth. Uh, the whole mask has been like splattered with blood as if somebody's taken a fistful of it and just mm. flung it at, at the mask itself. You can see that a, on this figure's head is this headdress made of, looks like owl feathers and multicolored sort of, uh, almost sort of native vibes with um, paper banners stuck in sort of strange places. You can see that around his necklace uh, around his neck is a, is a necklace, a sort of a string uh, along a series of beads uh, that periodically look like... Cool. Well, they look like eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they are eyeballs mm. is an entirely different thing, but they sure do look like eyeballs. Mm. Um, and wearing what looks like sort of a... kind of like a ceremonial garb matching the sort of general aesthetic of, of the headdress. Um... The body, uh, you, uh, the, what what skin is, uh, is showing through the through the, the behind the mask, through the headdress, and everything looks like powder white. Um, he this this figure comes in with two fellows who are more moderately dressed. Um, they have sort of long robes, hood still on, um, that have kind of got a, a, a sort of a golden brown sort of color to them. Um, long sleeves in the style of a monk. A monk yeah. um, that, that's what you notice sort of right at the top mm -hmm. beyond this this frightening figure. Um, and you see them approach the bartender who is frozen. Staring directly at them. We're still talking to the bartender, aren't we? No, you guys are talking at the table. Oh, okay, cool. Before you went up to go. Cool, because my danger magnet bartender. thing is really going to not be very good for this. I stick yeah. out like a sore fucking thumb. That's I would also, trauma. like, as soon as they come in, just caution you guys that even though you might not be able to see any weapons on them, that doesn't mean they don't have any. You don't see any weapons on me, and I'm currently holding two knives and a katana. Is that a religious thing? What it's are you? Short. I asking like their motif. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah, yes, because that's what I was going to ask. Is, is is their motif more religious or occult? Mm. Why don't you make an occult roll? Occult roll or yeah. a religious roll? Because I got I got academic religion and well, um, choose, academic occult. Choose, choose one. Occult spell. Somebody else can do another one. If I can do a cult if. Mm, My cult's only five. My average for a cult is three. If that. Do I need more than that? I mean, I guess I can roll. I can do a cult, but not very well. But you can do it. Yes, I can do it. Um, I like investigation. Yeah, you would need... That's not enough. You would need... Well, I didn't get it. I got two successes. Well, I guess I can do the average. And I can get four. If I get the average. So that's a four for a cult. Four successes of a yeah. cult? Yeah. With so, a 20. Natural. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> you've never been to Mexico. You don't know the sort of cultural traditions mm -hmm. there as much as you would sort yeah. of, you know, the great British traditions and that sort of thing. Even the Americans, you kind of have a general idea of like, you have some knowledge about the Native Americans just because it's come up in conversation. But... This is completely foreign to you, but recognizing sort of 
that's clearly like ceremonial headdress, um, what looks like. That is to your mind the sort of almost priestly garb of, you know, the mm, the yeah. quote unquote savages of the new world, right? And those those two wearing those robes, those are clearly like the robes of of worshippers of I, I, I could see it as very much like a pagan kind of priest. it is very much like that's 100 percent pagan shit that you yeah. don't know a whole lot of details about but you it's just like pornography would, you I, recognize it when you see yeah, it yeah i wouldn't necessarily know like mexican kind of like paganism stuff but i would see it that's clearly pagan worship of some kind yeah, yeah. should we be looking at them for someone who might have taken marco well, if, if Marco had thought that, I mean, if they took Marco, special, maybe we just ask him and get this done with. You think asking him is going to be a good idea? Has been no I one way to find out extra and do the push back from the table. I, I don't think that's it. a good idea. You see that that this this entire time, um, in a sort of a low gravelly tone, the the six foot figure with the skull mask and the the headdress and everything is. Um, doing what, what sounds like based on the rhythm and the tone almost like a chanting at the bartender and the, the, the bartender sort of very steadily, very slowly, very nervously um, reaches under the bar and retrieves what looks like a lockbox and then opens that up and begins handing out like f- fistfuls of pesos. Oh, that's not I'm weird. approaching. So I- we're, okay, we're well, going for Thrill Seeker. <laughs> okay, so you're going for Thrill Seeker, so get a, get a style point, please. Yeah. Hey, are they rubbing in? Can I get a motive? Yes. Motive. You want to do a motive? Yeah, sense it. Empathy motive? That's an average three. Average three. It's going to be harder because they're disguised. It's easier to sense the motive of somebody who's... You can clearly see their facial expressions yeah. and everything. That's one, two, three, four. That's a four. It's hard to discern, like, sort of details about their intent, but it's clearly... It's clearly, like... It's clearly adversarial. It's clearly yep. harmful. Yeah. So you are heading straight up to the bar. Yep. You see this this head-dressed figure watching as the bartender is putting money down, uh, essentially emptying out the lockbox in, in, in front of them. And then he sort of sees you out of the periphery of his eye, and you see what looks like a... Uh, a, a nervous, wide-eyed sort of quick shake of the head. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. Do it, amigo. I and sigh and kind of stand up and like walk on the other side. I look at you laughing. Say, I thought I was the one who's going to get us into trouble. <laughs> He's the one doing it. Yep. I'm just trying to get a better idea of what's going on. No, that's what I'm saying. He's the one doing it. I thought it was going to be me. Hey, uh, Owlin Bampots. Very slowly, the headdress <laughs> figure turns with his skull looking directly at you. You can see there's some kind of lacquered, polished red wood that form the eyeballs that are set into the skull mask itself. It's, he sort of cocks his head at you. doesn't say a thing, just sort of I don't stares know at speak, you. I don't know that they speak English. Going to do the that alone show the pistol. Away with you. Oh. This is going to be <laughs> he sort of cocks his head, looks, it is his head adjusts to clearly look at what you've displayed there. And then you hear what's. I don't know what it means. I'm just going to punch him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, I think, where we should stop. Oh. <laughs> You call me what? <laughs> Miglande Quitli. <laughs> Which, that'll make more sense to you later. I, yeah, probably. But, okay. So, <laughs> that's okay. We need to get to do it again. If you want. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I like that. We'll have to get everybody together, you know, yeah. obviously, but. Do it all. Now that's Zach. Next so. Sunday. I mean, yeah. Thing. Zach was our only, only fellow that. Could meet regularly lately. January was weird. Yeah. Mm. But again, my Sunday rehearsals end 6.30, so I'll have time to come back and 
various things. So, cool. thoughts? It's fine. Yeah, like the system. Mm hmm. Got enough flexibility to it, but well, we haven't done combat one. yet, so maybe we'll, we'll, yeah, that's <laughs> we'll see how combat goes. <laughs> like I, 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 I like Savage Worlds until it started in the combat. And I was like, no thanks. Yep. I like the... it's, which is a shame because there's so many fucking good settings for Savage it's Worlds I can't use so far. Yeah. Even the new edition um, I was reading is like I can't. Oh, it's, it's the same it's still... shit. Seamus yeah. is my favorite part. That, sure. was, that was great. <laughs> Character acting remains some of the strongest stuff we get when we show up here. Yep. <laughs> I love any chance I get to, like, rib. <laughs> rib off. Riff. Yeah, riff with Jimmy. It's fun. And I enjoy having gotten to really something super investigative. Yeah, that's nice, too. Yeah. Which is very quickly turning mm-hmm. violent. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, he did pick Thrill Seeker. Not my I, I wanted to time. use it. And I picked Danger Magnet, so if it wasn't him instigating the fight, it would be them seeing me and like... On the way out, they're like, I'm sure she has money. Yeah, right? Oh, I want all of you to remember that when we fuck this up, it there was the two stable people in our party that did this. Hey, no, no, no. I'm just standing Stable the player. Yeah. Unstable character. <laughs> Local character <laughs> burns to the ground <laughs> in Mexico City. <laughs> We used to have a good job. Ministry denies involvement. <laughs> For a future point, I I think when I go into combat, I kind of do like the Boondock Saint kind of a chant while I'm like getting <laughs> okay. Get it yeah, like, yeah. Do 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 do, do the I work shall now. Fear no evil <laughs> as I walk through the valley of death. And I, I start start beating down. Is that? Is that rope? Well? <laughs> I feel like there's a certain age of dude. That all has that speech memorized at one point. Oh, in yeah. Forever. It's such a yeah. Must be a yeah, poor man's Tarantino. It's yeah. the Boondock Saint it's speech. It's, it's, I know my ex husband had it memorized it's a, for a while. It's it's a cult movie. Yeah. There's some generally good weird parts of it, but mostly Willem for the most part, parts. it's very much like. <laughs> imagine the movie that will appeal to a 17 year old boy. Yeah. Okay. It's that movie. You're done. Lots of like consequence free violence and like not so many new people though. We're Irish and Fair we're point. going out to kill people but, and but, like I mean there was that Spiritus that Sancti one, one blah blah blah. blah. In the, uh, you know. Not like strip okay. but I don't remember the movie well enough to show. Not to say that it isn't entertaining. Hmm. They totally killed the guy The movie can be bad and entertaining. Yeah. It also has Willem Dafoe in it, so mm-hmm. they're good I don't think it's bad. I just think it's what is his name Adam? It's that one thing where you'll kinda go if somebody has this as one of their favorite movies, you worry. Yeah. But if they enjoy the movie, you go, no. Billy Connolly's in that. Uh, Willem Dafoe is in that. Probably the best part of that movie. Yes. Venom would be something I would say is fun. Willem Dafoe is... He's... he's yeah. He's a great-